Welcome back to SAP on Microsoft Azure. My name is Mark and today we're going to start a new series of videos where we look at how we can actually increase the availability of SAP components on Azure with failover clustering. Now that's a fairly comprehensive area we're going to cover. So I've decided to split up this video into various parts and this is the first part of it. So let's do this. So let's have a quick look at the overview of this video. We're going to look at um, use cases for clustering SAP software on Azure, what we can cluster, what we cannot cluster. We're going to look at the various sources of documentation we need to look at because that's one of the most important areas to cover. It's not exactly all in one place. So let's have a look at that. When to use a cluster and when not to use. Um, we're also going to spend a bit of time on this one because I think this is really important. We should only cluster when we absolutely have to. And finally, we're going to have a look at a quick demo where I'm going to set up a Microsoft failover cluster on two Azure virtual machines. Now, in the overview video, we covered already the single points of failure of an SAP system. That also tells us which component we can make a high available, or in other words, cluster it, which is obviously the ABAP or Java central services, which consists of the NQ and the message server. Um, we also want to cluster the database, which is another single point of failure. In our case, we're going to look just as an example to MS SQL and always on. And um, one area I would like to to draw your attention on is um, how we actually can handle the shared disk which is part of, um, of the SAP clustering. There are various options, and um, we're going to look in this specific case at a scale-out file server, but more to that later. While it may not be very complicated to set up a cluster and install SAP components into it, I strongly recommend you to get familiar with all the necessary sources of information and documentation around the process. Now let's have a quick look at it. A natural starting point is obviously the SAP NetWeaver install guide based on the specific NetWeaver version you want to set up. Um, you also need a database installation guide, which is both provided by SAP. Um, you can find it in the NetWeaver finder on the SAP marketplace. And again, it's obviously uh, reliant on the, um, the specific version you want to install. There's also a number of SAP nodes, which are going to uh, or which are frequently updated by SAP or by my Microsoft colleagues. Um, this is just a short list. Um, make sure you cover all the relevant notes from the SAP marketplace. And finally, we also have some Microsoft specific documentation. There's um, a few quite detailed setup guides for failover clustering in Azure. And also, I would like to draw your attention to the SAP on SQL block, which is maintained also by a number of my Microsoft colleagues. It's also great information in terms of SAP on Azure or SAP on Microsoft technology in general. And there's a number of fantastic assets in there around how to set up SAP on a failover cluster on Azure. What I would like you to consider before you make the decision whether you're going to cluster or not to cluster is operational complexity, right? So when you install a cluster or when you make the decision to set up SAP in a cluster, it obviously reduces the RTO, the recovery time objective, and it increases availability in return. However, there's a catch and the catch is in operations and maintenance, there's obviously additional effort to consider. So the thought I want to give you is just to really cluster when you need it and not take it as a default decision. In Microsoft, we have a terminology where we basically consider the difference between high availability and disaster recovery. So in the figure you see on this slide, the first example, this one would be no HA. So there would be a one plus one setup where you have one node or one component in the primary Azure region and um, in the disaster recovery region, you would have just the disaster recovery environment available for, for this SAP component. 
The second example is what we call two plus one, which means you have high availability in the first in the first region, in the first Azure region. And similar to the first example, you have your disaster recovery environment in the second region. So two plus one does not only increase the operational effort, it also increases your hardware footprint and in return your costs. So please consider very well before you make the decision to cluster whether your your business requirements actually support this decision. As mentioned earlier, there's really a lot of good documentation around on how to set up a failover cluster on Azure. There's a lot of preparation required and um, there's also some great videos on YouTube on how to do that. Some of the prep steps that need to be done are listed on this slide. I don't want to go through the details, but in general, you obviously need to set up a compute storage and network. You need to set up a domain controller. You need to configure a few items around the network. And you need to create two, two nodes for the cluster, join them the domain. And there's a couple of other bits and pieces to be done around firewalls, which I haven't listed here, but as mentioned, it's all well documented. Now this slide just gives you a quick overview on the setup that we're going to use during the demo. We have a subnet for the jump station down here called default. We have a subnet for the two domain controllers called management up here. Since we want to demo today how to cluster a database, we have two subnets for the cluster down here, the private cluster one and the public cluster subnet. We have another subnet for the SAP application service and a web subnet that we may choose at a later point in time. I've used Microsoft Terminal Services to log on to my jump station, which you may remember from the previous slide. And from there, I've logged on to the first cluster node, which is a Windows 2016 server system. And what we want to do here is we're going to go to the server manager and add the cluster feature by clicking here, add roles and features. The first, the first window here is just information. So we're going to click next here. We want to add a role based or feature based installation. We're going to click next here as well. It suggests just the first cluster node, which is OK. So we're going to click next here as well. Here it lists the various roles of um, Microsoft Windows Server, which we don't want to change because we want to go right to the next options, which is the features. And here we see failover clustering, which I'm going to activate. And Microsoft Windows already suggests just the necessary features. So I'm going to click add features here. And now it's activated, as you can see in the window. So we're going to click next here. And we're ready to install. We're going to tell it that in case it needs to reboot for the installation, it can do that. We don't care here. This is just a sandbox. So we can go and just click install here to finalize the installation. Now, like usual, this is going to take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording here and we're going to be back after a few minutes once this installation has been finished. The cluster software has been installed and we're going to repeat the same exercise on the second cluster node. So I've logged on to the second cluster node. We've got um, number five up here. We're going to do the same procedure, this time a bit quicker. We're going to add the cluster software to this node as well. Just going to click ourselves through the various options. And we install the failover cluster feature. We click Next. And we also enable a restart if required. Again, this is just a sandbox system. So we again just click Install here. And as usual, this is going to take two or three minutes. And I'll stop the recording for now. So we have now installed the failover cluster management software on both nodes. And as the next step, we need to actually create the cluster. For that reason, I have logged on to the first cluster node, which is SAP DB node 01. And in the management section, we're going to click create cluster. <laughs> 
So the first page of the cluster wizard just shows us some information. So we're just going to click next. And we're going to enter the server name, which is SAPDB node 01. We're going to add that. And it could resolve the name with the fully qualified domain name. So we're just going to continue here. Now this is around um, the validation of a cluster. You only need to do this if you intend to take the cluster in production and run production workloads on it. In this case, we're just creating a sandbox cluster. So we don't need Microsoft support for this. So we just uh, say no and click next. Now we need to add a cluster name, which is the access point for the administration as well. So we're going to say cluster SAP DB01, for example, and we click next. Now this here is just a summary. Um, if we click next, the cluster installation will happen. At this point, I've added just one node. I could have also added both nodes, but I want to show you how to how you can add a node to a cluster. And we just press next here. So now we've uh, finished the creation of the cluster and we click finish to finalize the cluster installation. Before we do that, we can have a quick look at the report. This is just a HTML page that gives us a summary on what has happened. So this is a lot of detailed information which we don't need at this point in time and we click finish here and we can see we have now a cluster in the failover cluster manager called cluster SAP DB01 so one of the things you can fix right away is the actual cluster package because you can see currently in the cluster core resources part of the window, you see that the actual cluster resource is down. The re reason for that is it inherited the IP address of the first node, which obviously won't work because we're going to get an IP address conflict. So what we're going to do is we'll just change that, give it a static IP address and choose an IP address that hasn't been used yet, for example, 10.0.4.50 we click apply we click OK and then we'll try to start the cluster package by clicking bring online and that seemed to have worked so that's the first step in installing the first node of the cluster and as promised, the next step, we're going to add the second node to the cluster. So in the configure section of the cluster administrator, we click add node. And the add node wizard starts with just information. We click next here. And we enter the second node name, which is SAP DB node 02. And we click add. It could resolve the name. Great, so let's go to the next window. We confirm we don't need Microsoft support for this sandbox cluster. And we click Next. And again, this is just a summary here. Next here, and let the wizard add the node to the cluster.
which has worked. So we skip the view report this time and we just click finish to finish this step in our configuration. Before we finish today's session, let's have a quick look at what we've achieved today. We've um, installed the cluster software on two virtual machines in Azure and we've configured a cluster. Let's browse through this cluster. For the time being, we haven't assigned any roles. We may do that at a later point in time. We have two nodes, SAP DB node 1 and 2. Both are apps and only one has currently a vote. We come to that in the next session. Storage, I haven't configured anything at this point in time. That was deliberate. Bear with me on this one as well. And we have a quick look at the networks and we see two networks. We see the public network, which is cluster and client. And we see the cluster only, which is the cluster private network. So much for this overview. You can find more technical enablement videos on this YouTube channel. And if you want to get notified on new videos released, please subscribe. Also, please do not hesitate to leave your comments on this video. And if you like, please give us your vote. Thanks for watching.